Well, hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to the Ellen Hudson YouTube channel. I'm thrilled to be here today getting a little kickstart for Christmas. I feel like I never start early enough. So this year I'm actually getting it all done and I'm using lots of products from the newest Essentials by Ellen release. For my main images for my tags, I'll be using that holiday character stamp set that you just saw. And I'm also using the retro holiday greeting stamp set, which has lots of fun greetings and really nice font that remind me a lot of Christmas as well. These tag dies are pretty special in that they cut four tags out for you at once. So just with one pass in the die cutting machine, you get a full set of tags. And that's really nice because especially around Christmas time, it's not often that you need just one tag. So today for these tags, I'm going to make them really creative and fun because when I'm giving a gift to somebody a lot of times I'm not giving a card with it or a Christmas card with it or if I am it's just a little bit awkward like here's a present and here's a card for Christmas I don't know so I'm going to create these really fun and uh, intricate tags so that I can give them something handmade but also it's not an addition uh, to the present it's sort of a part of the whole thing so to stamp these, I'm just actually going to pull up that piece of acetate that's covering it and ink them all up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And because I know that I just want all of these to be stamped out, I'm just doing it this way so that when I put down my piece of cardstock and apply pressure, I just get all of the images really nicely stamped out. I've decided that my first tag will feature this adorable Santa Claus that comes in the holiday character stamp set. And I'm going to color him in with Copic markers and I'm just trying to keep in mind for each shade that I'm coloring in that I want three tones to that shade just to bring in a lot of dimension and interest to the pieces that I'm coloring. So obviously he has a nice bright red hat, but for that color and for the shading and highlighting, I'm bringing in a darker tone, a highlight tone, and then a mid-tone. And you can find all of the shades that I used for Copic markers in the description as well. A really great thing about the shipping tag dies and this holiday character stamp set is that the size of the images work really well with the tags. So the dimensions of the tags almost were made for the sizes of the images in the stamp set. So the Santa isn't going to overtake the entire tag or the entire, all the dimensions of the tag. It's just going to fit on there really nicely so that I'm able to add a few different elements and a sentiment in there if I wanted to, almost like a tiny handmade card which is basically what we're making so I really love how these two work together and I think that was really smart so now that I've got them all colored up I'll go ahead and use the coordinating dies to cut him out and I'm going to focus now on the background or my actual tag design so I've decided that I want some sort of candy cane look because he's Santa. So I'm going to use this beach towel stripe stencil from Altenew and tape my tag from the back so that it's adhered to the stencil. This way it won't move around when I'm doing my ink blending. And for my ink blending, I'm using Samba, which is a nice bright red color by Katherine Pooler. I'm just going to use a blending brush and really gently get the color onto the tag and I can obviously make this more saturated if I want to or less. It all just depends on how much ink or how much product that you actually put onto and blend onto the tag itself. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stencil from the tag and I get this really fun candy cane look without actually using any, even any Christmas uh, supplies really for this look. And I really like the way that that turned out. It's not screaming candy cane, but you can definitely tell that that's uh, what it's supposed to be. So now that I'm pulling out my retro holiday greeting stamp set for the sentiment, I know right away that I want to use the naughty or nice sentiment. Now I want to bring in a little bit of shine and sparkle into the card. So I've decided to emboss this in gold just right on the bottom uh, section there that's going to peek out from uh, just underneath Santa. And so I've prepped it with a powder tool and this is just to make sure that my embossing powder only sticks to my Versamark ink, which is what I'm using to stamp the sentiment. And I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up. Now it actually worked out quite well with these straight lines because I was able to do that really easily. 
uh, but here I'm just pouring on some Hero Arts gold embossing powder and tapping off the excess and then I'll go ahead and pour all of that extra back into the pot that way I don't lose any and then I'll hit this with my heat gun just making sure that I got it really nice and hot I don't want any warping on my tag and here is the finished product obviously I added a couple um, images of that holly that's in the stamp set right next to Santa and I think this will be really beautiful on a present so now moving into my next tag, I'm going to be ink blending again and using Something Borrowed, also by Katherine Pooler. Now I'm going to have this be a flat color, so I'm not going to put a stencil over it or anything like that. And I do have to tell you that I lost a bit of my video. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But thankfully this was a fairly simple one, so I'm just going to go into what I did to create it. So I went ahead and stamped the holly lip image out a few times, colored them in, all of the shades that I use are in the description, and then I die cut them out and adhered them together in a wreath shape. And then I used Happy Holly Days sentiment from the Retro Holiday Greetings embossed in white on a black piece of cardstock and adhered that right there in the center of the wreath. My next tag is probably the most elegant and most versatile of the entire set. So again, I'm going to have a nice flat color on this. So I'm using spruce from Catherine Puller, which is great as an evergreen color. It works great with Christmas uh, images and things like that. So I'm just using that and blending it all over my tag. Now I want this to be pretty saturated. I want a nice deep green color. So once I get it where I'd like it, I'm going to pull out my Altenew antique gold ink. This is a pigment ink and it shows up really beautifully when stamped on cardstock. Now I know that you've probably tried some in the past uh, different metallic inks and have not had great success but I will tell you this Altenew is beautiful. So I'm using that little branch or evergreen branch uh, stamp and I'm just stamping this all throughout the tag just to make my own background pattern in this gold color and you can see that it's just super shiny and I love the way that this looks against the green color. Now I waited for that to dry. I even hit it with my heat tool a little bit just to make sure that all of the pigment ink was dry. I put a little bit of embossing buddy powder on there just to make sure that again the embossing powder only sticks to where I'm stamping and then I'm going to stamp Merry Everything right over the center of that tag. So this uh, sentiment takes up pretty much the entire tag. So I wanted to keep this one fairly simple, but I also really liked that it just had that shine and elegance to it. And this can also be used across the board, uh, really any holiday uh, or winter holiday. I think that this would be great for. My final tag is this one here. Now this is obviously the finished tag, but I'm going to show you how I create this a freehand fireplace. Now I am not an artist, I'm not a sketch artist, and I don't claim to be one, but sometimes when you can take something and make it really simple and make it your own, it's really fun to try. So trust me when I say, if I can do this, you can do this. So I'm just making lines basically here, and it's really hard to see, uh, but when I start going over it with a darker pen, you'll be able to see, but basically I'm just making bricks. And how I'm doing that is just creating straight lines across and then staggering the lines going down to make it look like they're sort of offset. So normally when you see bricks, they're not one on top of the other. There's one and then sort of like two that meet in the middle of that one on the top. Before I go in with my darker pen to make the lines a little more dominant, I'm going to color in the bricks. And I'm going to do this because my pen isn't alcohol marker safe. So the alcohol markers will drag the ink from the pen and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just coloring in the bricks this nice uh, brownish red color and I'm making it more highlighted in the center than on the very edges. And I think that this will just help it sort of differentiate between each brick a little bit more. So I'm just going to do this in sections. So I'm doing the top section first. So after I get all of the bricks colored in the top section, I'm grabbing that pen and just following along the line, making sure that I just make it really dominant and really dark so that you can see the fireplace sort of coming together. Now that you can see the lines that I'm drawing and where I have set the boundaries for each of the bricks, you can see what I'm talking about, about staggering those bricks. So you can see two on the bottom there and then there's one centered sort of right above it, um, which is like 
slightly off of the tag, um, but you're just going to stagger them in that way. It just looks more like a fireplace. So I've gone ahead and done the two side sections and now I'm showing you how I'm doing the center. So I'm just free handing again with a pencil some fire or some flames. This doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of it's going to be covered by the stockings anyway. Um, but again, before I go in with my pen, I'm just going to go in first with a very bright yellow and then I'm going to bring that down a little bit with an orange and then finally outline it with a red just to make it look like fire. And this is reminding me a lot of like a cartoon fire, but <laughs> that's what I wanted it to look like. And then I'm gonna take a W7. You could do a black uh, marker, but I get a little nervous with black. So I'm using a W7, which is almost black, and then just coloring in the inside of that fireplace. And here is the end result. I really love the way that this came out, actually. I was really impressed by myself <laughs> here. So, uh, I was like, don't, don't touch it. Don't do anything else. I, I really like the way that that came out. And because I just can't help myself, I'm going to get started on my Christmas cards as well. So this is going to be a very untraditional, as far as colors go, Christmas card. I'm using Fiesta Blue, Party Dress, and Royal Treatment, all by Katherine Pooler. And this is going to be a really fun, feminine Christmas card. I know some people really only like the traditional colors, but for somebody who's a little bit younger or somebody who just really enjoys lots of bright colors, these can be fun too. But you could also use this. I'm using the uh, Christmas tree image from the holiday character stamp set, but I'm not stamping the stump so that you can actually use this image just as a decoration on any card. You could do a birthday card or anything because of the background that I'm stamping, it really just looks like a fun pattern. And until you put the Merry Christmas sentiment on there, it doesn't really register in your head what it is without the tree stump. So I love that you can use this all year round. So again, I'm using those three colors and you can see that I've skipped a few spaces and stamped in Versamark ink there. And at the very end, I'm going to pour some gold embossing powder over it and that's when those are going to show up and they're gonna be a nice shiny golden color, which I think works really well with the Christmas theme, uh, but also the non-traditional color scheme that we have going on there. For my sentiment, I've used a lot of words or word stamps that are included in the Mondo Amaryllis stamp set, which is also from This Essentials by Ellen Release. And then I cut them all down just to create uh, this full sentiment here on the face of this card. I hope I was able to inspire you to get started on your Christmas crafts early this year. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, the links to all of the products are in the description. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the Ellen Hudson channel so that you can get lots more inspiration from the Ellen Hudson team. Thank you so much. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.